Hello guys, my name is Matt from paintacademy.com and today I will show you how to paint skin on the corn rivers. What we have here, it's the corn guy from Shadespire starting box and yeah, that's one and here goes the another one and the another one and two more yeah so we have like the whole warband and I will going to paint all of them but I only show one of them as a as the example I think the leader should be the one but I will go with my favorite and yes I choose this guy I'm painting them for my patreon so one of my patrons will win this whole warband and I want to make them a little bit different than the original color scheme but something in the same style so uh, pale skin is the must for me and we will see what will come next since it's skin tutorial and this is my go-to skin tone I'm using almost always Unfortunately, it's a little bit too healthy for this purpose, so I will need to mix it up with something else because I don't have any other skin tone to start with. I decided to mix it with navy blue, which is like the mix of very dark blue and grey, and this mix makes this color way more pale and grey and it makes it lose all the pinky side to it. It's base layer, so nothing fancy. We just need to spray the mix all over the skin area. And at, unfortunately, my airbrush is a little bit clogged. I sprayed with it all day and I decided to do one more mini instead of cleaning it which I probably shouldn't do but don't worry we will push through and I will clean it just after this one layer I'm also using new airbrush so it's a little bit uncomfortable for me but uh, I will probably get to know it more within a time so this this video may be a little bit awkward with the airbrush side but I will explain why it's different and why it's uncomfortable for me in a minute. The next step as usual is to add a little bit of the shadows and I made a small mistake uh, here or maybe before but I, I will explain it a little bit later. And here goes my new airbrush. To this day I was using Badger Chrome from the Regenate line and I decided to try the new company. The previous one was great but I read a lot of good things about this company which is from Germany and which name I can spell. I'm only using it for a few days but I noticed two main differences. The one it's using uh, different paint consistency and I'm very used to my old, way, old ways of doing things so I need to adjust to that and when, when I got it right it probably will work as well as the badger and the second thing it's uh, just very easy to clog it up the badger was much more resilient in that manner but I guess I will figure it out as well back to our corn guy we need to do the shadows and in this case I will use Indian Shadow from SK75 and this is business as usual we are spraying from the bottom up and just aiming at very base of his core in this case so this color may be a little bit too bright and too red but we will see after this uh, one layer and I also was a little bit worried that the new airbrush will do a little bit of like small spots 
with this uh, shadow color so the uh, shadow layer won't be like consistent and smooth so it came out much better than I expected and beside that you and the highlight layer will cover most of the inconsistency in this layer I'm doing right now okay so it's time to do the highlights and I'm doing that by mixing this base skin tone I had at the beginning with a little bit of white I'm using this kind of white only because it's big battle and it's convenient you can use any kind of white you have and highlighting is spraying just from the top down opposite to the thing you did before so you want to get very strong contrast don't be shy don't expect to do it in many layers you should uh, see the result immediately obviously you may need to enhance it in the next steps but you should see visible result after just one layer so don't be shy you need a lot of contrast and try to achieve it with one simple layer of highlight airbrush should make things faster and easier not harder and slower so keep that in mind and the last thing with the airbrush will be adding a little bit more contrast to the base of his core so that's the thing I probably could avoid by doing uh, all the layers from the top down so starting with very dark adding uh, like this middle Indian shadow then this mix I did at the beginning and then the final highlight For, but I didn't I start with the middle color and add shadows and the highlights so I need to enhance this like the deep color at the very end so yeah I'm doing doing just that by spraying Indian shadow with the mix of navy, navy blue at the base of his core I just trying to avoid most of the model just aiming with like the tiny amount of paint at the base of, of his core and his uh, skin area okay so we just need to do all the other work and i will start with doing black lining on the other all the parts that are in contact with uh, the skin it isn't really necessary but it's very good habit to have to start with black lining just to get the whole idea what should stay in that color and what shouldn't so I really recommend to do that and as I said before I painting these guys for my patreon but they won't be only items to win this month because I was not very good creator for quite some time I want to make something special for the patrons who are still with me and yeah hopefully it will be at least fun for a moment <laughs> and i will cut to the end of black lining because it's super boring okay so this not very amusing part of paint job is behind us we can start with something more useful and again it's the part i could probably avoid by doing and consecutive layers from the bottom up with a brush instead of starting in the middle I did that because I just follow my standard protocol which is do the middle layer then do the washing then do the rest and in this case I, did, I didn't want to do the washing part but I still followed my old protocol for painting skin but right now I'm painting like the very deep sh shadow underneath each muscle so it's like black lining between the muscles maybe it isn't a very good word but uh, just enhancing the shadows especially at the parts uh, in the middle so I want to make the 
all the very visible muscle group even more um, detached from everything else. And I'm painting with a mix of Indian shadow and black. The Indian shadow itself would be too bright and the black should be a little bit too dark, so I trying to do something in the middle. And it isn't very hard part, uh, but it is a little bit tricky at the very top part of the skin. So at his shoulders or his neck, because these parts are almost all white. And if you do the line, it's too obvious. So you can either do just a little bit of the shadow there or you can do like the obvious line and then try to smooth it, smooth it out with a highlighting part in the next steps. So I recommend you to try both and see what, what is better for you. I usually try to do it smooth but sometimes I go a little bit over the top and then I just leave it and leave it for the next step to smooth it out. So yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say is when you do lines which are a little bit too obvious or too strong, don't worry about it. You will smooth it out later. It's just not try to do it purposefully. And this method is more fit for the models you want to achieve some very special effect on their skin because for more large scale default paint job on the skin you just did this part with the washing so this this is a little bit more advanced technique i guess but if you are painting whole army you maybe not use it on the other all models but for the sum it will be certainly something you want to try out what do they eat in chaos wastelands looks like each other i guess and before i start the final highlighting i want to do one more layer of pure indian shadow and i want to achieve two main things with that, with it first is to find the lines which are too strong and too obvious and Smooth them, up, smooth them out a little bit and the second thing is to add a little bit of the reddish color to the whole mix because they are so pale they look a little bit like undeads and I want to show that they are still living they are just very very pale so a little bit of reddish color between the, this very dark shadow and this very pale highlight it's something I really want to add. There is one more detail I need to take care of, which is his scars. And I want to make them very, very visible. You will need uh, any kind of dark red, really, to do that. And you need to remember about two things. You need thin paint and you need to brush towards the center of the scar. So you want to do like this glazing toward the uh, scarring. And if you do that right, uh, the pigment will accumulate mostly at the very center of the scar and skin around it will be a little bit reddish so it will look more realistic. Or actually, I don't know if realistic is a good word, but it will be definitely very visible, very uh, distinguished from everything else. And it will add some interesting touch to the whole model. And it will look bloody, which is good for the corn guys. And you should do that with like three or four thin layers. So try to not do it too fast because you can screw up the whole effect. Uh, 
and it's time to do like the final highlights and you can do it with like pure white or almost pure white it doesn't really matter mm, you can try both and see what fits you the best mm. it isn't a lot of work but you need to follow the lines pre-made from the airbrushing so if you enhance the highlights already made with airbrush just by adding more pigment to the very top of each highlight and maybe adding a little bit of texture it will be very easy only down downside to this method it's that it requires a little bit of experience so you probably won't get it right first time but remember about two things less is more so if you are, aren't sure you can just leave the airbrushing work as it is especially if you have a lot of models to handle second thing it is you can go with very small steps so you will need to paint more than few models to get it right but you don't need to do like whole model each time you can just go with like one muscle parts or one muscle section or even one muscle and if it's not what you want you can just try it on the other model and the other model and the other model and when you develop this eye to this uh, lines you need to follow it will be much easier and you will be, will be painting much faster and if you are not sure where to start mm -hmm, the top of the each muscle it's a very good point to do the highlighting so try it out on the one muscle like the biceps or the pecs and if it works just replicate that if it doesn't work just leave it and try on the other uh, on on the other muscle but the top of the muscle it's like always the good starting point and you can think about it like on photoshopping the muscles for the fitness magazine like you have all the right lighting right definition everything looks good you need to do like the last glowing part at the top of each muscle on the photo just to make it extra shiny and even more defined I don't want to do the cut to the end of highlighting because I don't want you to miss any detail you, you may need to uh, replicate so I just speed it up to the end of highlighting and hopefully it will be something you will use in your own process And yeah, that's pretty much all of it. Mm, I also painted the another guy off screen. So here you can see how they both looks. And the last thing I need to do, is to do at this guy is his teeth 
which it's the only visible visible part of his face mm, and it's really easy I just need to take very fairly thick white paint and just do like the each teeth separately and again as always ho I hope and uh, this video was uh, useful for you I hope you will try it by yourself and I really hope you will send me the results in the description box there is a link to the article on how to paint the whole warband from the start to the finish so not only the skin but all the other parts as well and if you find this video helpful and you want to support me you can always go to my patreon and support me there and at the end I would really like to thanks all the people who supported me from the beginning and to this day and anyone involved really taking my posting consistency it's very generous of you to do that but anyway here you can compare the two, the two guys which I already finished at least on the skin uh, part and you can also compare them with only airbrush guy so now you can see the difference between only airbrushing and really doing the regular brush work I think it's worth it but I guess you could also just wash the airbrushing part and just roll with it if you are a really minimalist painter That's all I wanted to say and show you, so thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Cheers!